A Chicago public schools teacher active in the Andersonville neighborhood, Diane Delighton, is running against one of the most powerful members of the city council, 40th Ward Alderman Pat O'Connor. I'm Mike Fouché, publisher of AlderTrack, and this is our Meet a Chicago Candidate series. Diane, you've basically, you've broadly talked, you are broadly talked about as the CTU candidate uh, running against Alderman O'Connor, other than education politics. Mm -hmm. What drove you to run for city council? I'm a long-term ward resident. I've been in the 40th Ward 32 years. And the reason I'm running against Pat O'Connor for city council is we need be better representation in city council. Okay, um, so do you consider yourself an Emmanuel Garcia, Fioretti, or, or uh, Wilson supporter at all? I consider myself a 40th Ward resident who's running to improve my ward. I think the voters have to decide who the next mayor is going to be. I currently, though, don't support many of the policies coming out of the currently, current city council. So have you talked to the various candidates uh, running for mayor? We have, and we've talked uh, with several in the Progressive Caucus as well. And so have they? Have, have the, has the mayor, any of the mayor candidates asked you for endorsement or suggested working with you? They have all been curious, as we are with them, but I really feel that my first and foremost job is to represent the people of the 40th Ward. We, we, we will see how the rest shakes out with the voters. So most candidates, uh, most aldermen would say most of what they do is ward maintenance stuff, but if you had one big citywide issue, what would it be? I don't have just one citywide issue. I'll, okay. I'll give it to you briefly, though. Uh, as a city council representative for the 40th Ward, I'd like to see CHA, CPS, and CTA brought under council oversight. I think that's the only way voters are going to have accountability, and that would be through their aldermen. I also am interested in Amaya Pawar's idea to have an independent budget office. I do, I'm a math teacher, and I do like the idea of people reading contracts and having somebody who's not politically connected going over every budget line before it's voted on or funded. I would also give money, full funding, to an inspector general. Anyone in city council who doesn't want oversight probably shouldn't be an elected official. And I have to get an elected school board. My campaign workers were instrumental in getting that on the ballot for February in the 40th Ward. Unless that happens, unless we have an elected school board, nothing else will change. We cannot leave running our schools to connected corporations and business people. We have to have the community, teachers, principals, community leaders, s former students, people who know education running the schools. So, but, I mean, the 40th Ward has generally done pretty well, as most wards in the city have. I mean, the property taxes or property values are, are higher. Uh, I think they've recovered mostly from the, the big dip after the recession. Uh, and it, some parts of it, Andersonville and Lincoln Square, are considered hot neighborhoods. So how do you convince neighborhood voters that they need a new alderman? Well, Pat O'Connor doesn't fit our ward anymore. We're progressives. I wouldn't give anyone in City Hall credit for our property values. I spent many, many, many nights out spray painting over graffiti on our viaducts with our women's club in our neighborhood 30 years ago. We long-term residents of the 40 Ward and the new residents of the 40 ward, 40th Ward want a voice in City Council that represents us. The ward services, there's a large difference in the level of ward services we receive depending on who you know or what you know or where you live in the ward. And that is one of the bones of contention currently. Well, one of the things, though, that O'Connor would say is that a lot of the ward services have been taken out of his hands. I mean, most aldermen, if you call their office, the first thing they do is call 311. So I mean, how are you going to be able to make much difference as a freshman alderman? I would agree that some of the services have been taken out of aldermen's hands. I would, however, push for the, what's left to be distributed equally around the ward, not to friends and relatives and neighborhoods of people that the alderman knows. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Diane. Okay. Thank you. You can learn more about the Diane Delighton campaign and almost 200 others by subscribing to our newsletter at aldertrack.com, by listening to the series on Rivet Radio, or by subscribing to Aldertrack on YouTube. More great stuff to come.